Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going over a great first project for, for my ceramic one class or for any beginning ceramic class or advanced ceramic class. Why? Because we all need one of these in ceramics. That's a glaze plate. Now a glaze plate, I've seen this project on a number of uh, fellow ceramic teachers buddies that I've got on Facebook, on Instagram, everybody does a, a variation of the glaze plate, but I figured that for some of us, especially the new teachers, they need to know about this project because it's a great one. All right, so to start off, let's talk about what this really is. So for me, I made a TARDIS. Why? I like the geek stuff. Now for this piece, we're making a mini tray, and for that mini tray, we're going to have little wells inside of the piece so that we can pour our glaze into here as we're working. So instead of using just the jar of glaze, you're going to have a small pallet that you can dump the glaze into and use it to work on your entire piece. Now for these, do you have to decorate yours up? No. But I would recommend putting a clear coat of, of just regular transparent glaze on there. Why? Just because you, that gives you a nice slick surface to work it, to work your glazes into. Plus, it makes cleanup a lot easier. Now, let's go over the specifics on how to create this project. Okay, so for this piece, what we're doing is we're starting out with a couple of sheets of clay. Now, when I'm doing this project with my students, I definitely want to reiterate with them that this project is not for a major sculptural grade piece. What I want you to do is experiment. Experiment with how the tools work, how to roll out a slab of clay, how to manipulate a piece of clay, how to use the trim tools in the clay. So what do each of these things do to the clay to make the clay do what it's supposed to do and why should, why not do this for a first project because that gives you that time to experiment it gives you that time to test out each of those tools figure out what works best for you and how it works uh, a lot of the times that we're teaching this teaching ceramics we don't we also we don't take into account that we're, we have to teach pinch slab coil technique but you forget that the tool that you use kids don't want to automatically understand how that thing works and they need to have that time to test it out so using this project to sit there using this project as a test bed works great for getting everybody comfortable with the materials with the tools with the process makes life a lot easier for this project here step one we're gonna go ahead and start rolling out a slab of clay now for me using my TARDIS I had a sketch already in my sketchbook so if you didn't do that make sure you do that where's my sketchbook Sketchbook. Now, first things first, when you're working on a new project, first gotta draw a sketch. Now, I did a very simple TARDIS sketch in my sketchbook. I wanted to put down a lot of measurements in mind. So, how long does the piece need to be? So, I wanted to settle on something that's about nine inches in length, four or five inches wide, and I want to have each of the wells be about an inch and a half, two inches in, in space. So, a lot of math measurements off the bat. So, if you got a math teacher and you're like trying to get a math lesson, uh, collaboration math lesson going on great piece to start off with that so once I've rolled out my sheet of clay I've got uh, now for me and again trying to minimize touchy touchy on every on all the services all of my students have rolling pins and and we use the rail system so the rail system is where you have two dowel rods that you can lay down and you can use as how thick or thin that piece of clay is so I do have a slab roller but to make sure that nobody's touching everything all at once, uh, and I'm not rolling out slabs 24 seven, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and have my students use the dowel rods with the rolling pits, it's just much easier. Now, once you've rolled out this sheet of clay, you can go ahead and start transferring your design onto it. However, be delicate because this is soft, soft clay. Uh, a pencil kinda doesn't work really, really easily, so if you let it firm up to that almost leather hard state, this works a lot better to work on your design to cut pieces out. Again, most of this is going to be a cut job, so you don't really need to worry if it's drying out a little bit more. Um, working on leather hard clay like this is usually a better option. If that's not the option that you're going for, you do have a couple plan B sections. One is I have these um, rubber tip tools. These are great for drawing on top of clay. Again, this will give you kind of a similar but slightly better option instead of using a pencil to draw on the clay. Or you can start experimenting with regular hand tools. Or what I use as a common thing is the back of a paintbrush. Uh, works great to get in there and just do some line design work. I've put a back of a paintbrush into a pencil sharpener to sharpen it up some, which works out really well. You can also blunt it on by pressing it against the table if you have a nice masonite table, not wood, because it will dent into the wood and that'll just not be a smooth surface anymore. So you do want to mitigate that. 
Now, once you've gotten your design taken out, now we gotta start removing the clay from those wells. So this part is where we get into a lot more experimentation. Using your wire tools, you're gonna to trim out sections of the clay at a time. Again, you're just trying to pull off a few layers at a time until you get low enough into the piece where you don't go through the bottom of it. But if you did, I do have a plan B for you. So smooth out the wells. I usually smooth mine out with a sponge with a little bit of water on the end of it just to melt some of the clay around just to make it a lot smoother. Definitely want to do that to finish off all your pieces. But if you did go through the well, not a big deal. Right now, because we rolled our clay really thin already with using those dowels, roll out another sheet of clay and notice what I'm doing here is using slip. Now, most of us understand have been using ceramics for a long time that slip is the glue of the ceramic class. So what I want to do is put down a nice thin layer of slip, place my other TARDIS piece on top uh, and then slowly press that down. You want to work from the center outwards. We're going to squish out all of our air. Think of it like putting on a cell phone cover. You don't want air bubbles underneath your screen because it doesn't look right and you definitely don't want air bubbles underneath your clay because it might explode. Just not a, not a fun thing to have. So once you've smoothed out all of your clay and we've pushed it all together, again using the sponge, dampen it with some water and smoothing out all the pieces around the clay, anywhere where everything is touching, you want to smooth out all of those uh, lines, get everything nice and clean and then you can go ahead and add some more detail to your pieces. Now, at this stage, you're pretty much done, but if you wanna just take it up another notch, you can always glaze this piece as well. Because I'm doing a TARDIS, I definitely wanna have that TARDIS blue along the outside of the piece. Why? Because it just gives a nice finish to it. Now, I will say that when I was doing this, I was doing it really quickly just so I could show my students, hey guys, this is what this is supposed to look like, but the, take a little more time make sure your paint lines are a lot cleaner than mine and that will give me that nice slick surface over this I'm using a gloss glaze to finish these pieces off if you're using an underglaze that will not have a gloss glass like finish and won't be completely sealed up to work with the glaze or other paints just the same so I would definitely use a gloss glaze to finish these pieces up but again that's optional if you don't do that do put on a clear gloss glaze just so it has a nice sealant and again we're doing this because we want to create that glass surface on these paint palettes so it just makes cleanup a lot easier and lastly when we're doing this project again focus on the tools how do these tools work on the clay how does how do the tools cut into the clay move the clay manipulate the clay that's what we want to see so take your time experiment with the clay figure out how these things work and that's going to make your semester a lot better or however long you're taking this class. Awesome, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. One, I hope that you got something wonderful out of today's class. Always trying to express some knowledge to you guys and learn something fresh, something new. As always, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise the hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, I'm gonna go work on some more pieces. But I'll catch you guys later. Later, guys.